All right then, gang. So the next topic I want to cover is something called generics. And generics are a thing not only in Dart, but also in a lot of other programming languages as well. They basically allow us to pass multiple different types into functions and classes to make those functions and classes, well, more generic. I think the best way to demonstrate this is with an example. So let's create a new class, first of all, called collection. And this class would be used to create a new collection of items, a bit like a list, but also with some extra properties and methods attached to it. So this class is going to have a name property, which is a string, and that's going to be the name of the collection. And it's also going to have a data property, which is going to be a list. And then we also need to make a constructor function to take in these two values as arguments and to set them. So let's do that using the shorthand approach where we say this dot and then whatever the value name is called. In our case, it's going to be this dot name and this dot data. And then finally, I want to make a method on this class called random item, which returns a random item from the data property. Now, there's a few ways we can do this, but what I'm going to do is use a built-in list method called shuffle, which basically shuffles the order of a list. And then what I'm going to do after we've done that is just return the first item in the list. So every time we call this function right here, we're going to reshuffle the list first, and then we're returning whatever is at position one after that reshuffle. So hopefully it's going to be different each time. So then we have our class now, and this is all okay. But if we click on the data property, we can see that its type is list, and then in that list, dynamic. And this means that Dart doesn't know what kind of data will be stored in this list. It could be strings, it could be integers, it could be objects like pizzas or menu items. The same is also true if we click on the random item function that we created. You can see that it doesn't know the return type because it doesn't know what kind of data that we're returning from this list. So this means that if we create a new instance of the collection in the future and pass in the data list as an argument, when we come to access that data or use this function on that instance, Dart isn't going to know what kind of data we're working with. So we're not going to get good code hints or code completion or good error feedback either. Now I can demo that by coming back to the main function and making a new variable called foods and setting that equal to a collection. Now we need to pass in two arguments, right? To the collection, the title or the name of the collection, and then the list of items itself. So the name can just be, I don't know, menu items. And then for the list, we're going to pass in a bunch of different menu items and pizzas, which are also menu items, by the way, because they extend the menu item class. And I've already created those menu item objects and pizza objects in prep for this lesson up here. So all we need to do is pass in a list of all of those different objects into this collection constructor as the second argument. And once we've done that, we're going to have our collection instance ready to use. So what I'm going to do is try using the random item method on the collection, which returns a random item to us from the data, right? The list of menu items in this case. So we'll make a new variable called random and set that equal to the foods collection. And then on that, we use the random item method. Now then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this random variable to the console so that we can actually see that this works first of all, and we can run the code. Hopefully after a few seconds, we will see a random menu item printed to the console over here on the right. Awesome. However, if we click on the random variable right here, we're going to see in the bottom right panel, the type of this variable is dynamic. So that's Dart saying that it really doesn't know what type of data we're getting back from the data property inside the collection object from this function in essence. And that's because inside the collection class, we don't specify what type of data is being stored in the list and also what type of data is being returned from the random item function. So when we come to use the data property and the random item function, Dart doesn't have enough information about them to say what type of data we're getting back from them. And that's why we see the dynamic type. Also, because Dart doesn't know what type of data this is, if we try to access any of the properties or methods on this random variable right here, it doesn't give us good code hints or suggestions as to the things available to menu items, which isn't ideal. So to overcome this, we can make our class a generic class instead. Now, the way we do this is by coming to the class and after the class name, adding some angle brackets and inside those angle brackets, add a capital T 
which stands for type. And now what we're saying here is that when we make an instance of this class, we're also going to pass the class a type of data to work with, which is captured then by this T. And then inside the class, we can use that T to represent that type anywhere within the class itself. So this is almost like passing a type as an argument into a class when we instantiate it. So for example, if we go back to where we create the foods collection, after we say collection, we can add angle brackets and pass in the type of data that we'll be using in this collection. So since we're using menu item objects, we'll say menu item is the type, that was the class name. And now back down where we define the class, we capture that menu item type right here where we say T anytime we instantiate this class using that type in angle brackets like we have just done. So then anywhere we use that T inside this class then, that's going to denote that menu item type. So I could specify that the list of data right here has to be of type T by adding that after the list. Now we've seen this kind of syntax before where instead of T, this might be string or int to denote list of those data types. But now we're saying T, meaning that the type of data in the list must be whatever the type is that we passed into the class when we made a new instance of it, in this case, the menu item. And then down at the function, we could also add T before the function name to say the type returned from this function is of type T, which again, in this case, is the menu item type. So then now, Dart will have enough information to know what type of data gets returned from this function. And we can verify that by going up to the random item function call, clicking on the random variable and seeing that now in the bottom right, we get the menu item type. So it knows about that now. And the good thing about this is that we now get good code completion because if we try to access the properties on this object, we can see it showing us the properties and methods associated with the menu item class. We didn't get this before because Dart didn't know it was a menu item object. And so it couldn't suggest those properties and methods, but now it does know, which is awesome. Now you might be thinking, why not just explicitly type the list down here inside the class to be menu item? Well, if we did that, then we'd be closing the class down to any other type of data in the future. And we'd be saying it could only ever be used for menu item objects, right? But by making it generic instead, we're allowing this list of data to be any type we want it to be in the future. For example, I could make another collection and let that collection work with strings by passing in the string type instead of menu item when I make that new collection. So we're keeping this class very generic now, but still allowing Dart to know what types are being passed around where, so it can give us better feedback. All right then, so that's the basics of generics covered. In the next lesson, I wanna shift focus and start talking about async, await, and something called futures.